Pegasus can do things on your phone that you can't even do. It can activate any function on your phone. It completely mirrors it. Amnesty International reports on a massive leak of 50,000 phone numbers. I think what the project is showing is a breadth and a scale of the abuse. At the center of the probe is the Pegasus spyware. It can look for your cameras. It can also take pictures. It accesses your messages, your history. It can listen to what you say and it can also record you. So yeah, Pegasus is, is pretty terrifying. So what is Pegasus? It's a software created by an Israeli company called NSO Group, and the company says it's designed to track terrorists. Jamal Khashoggi, a Saudi journalist, was murdered. Several of the people that he was in touch with were surveyed by Pegasus. That should stop everyone and make us think. Cyber weapons are weapons. People get killed. My name is Eyal Weizmann. I am the Director of Forensic Architecture and also a professor at Goldsmiths. I'm Shuri Molavi. I'm the lead Israel-Palestine researcher at Forensic Architecture. People think of architecture as simply the kind of the design of objects and spaces. But architecture is a very useful tool in actually mapping human rights violations that are caught on camera. We use spatial and media methodologies and technologies to investigate state and corporate violence. We investigate police forces, we investigate the military, we investigate sometimes secret services. Architects and artists, scholars, researchers, designers, developers, working together on a single investigation. We worked very often on Israeli colonial violence in Palestine. Until now, that has mainly involved things like checkpoints, roadblocks, military and police violence against Palestinians. Today, contemporary colonialism is also digital. You need to control people. And this is where the NSO group comes in. The NSO group is an Israeli cyber surveillance company. It has emerged in a context of a whole ecosystem that emerged out of Israeli state surveillance of Palestinians. The problem with Pegasus is that we don't know a lot of information. What we know is that the hack will either come in the form of a one-click hack, which means that you get a message on your phone, you click on that message, and then your phone is hacked, or it comes in the form of a zero-click, and this is where the missed call on your phone is able to hack your phone. Later version of Pegasus, they just send you uh, a message and, and the message carries the malware. This is called a WhatsApp hack. The NSO found a vulnerability within WhatsApp and used the software to actually as a doorway into people's phones. Pegasus is sort of setting the stage for the new terrain of warfare against activists and civil society groups around the world. Pegasus was on our radar for three, four years. We first heard about Pegasus when we were invited to investigate the 2014 disappearance of the students of Ayotzinapa. But they've entered the town of Iguala and disappeared there. Los 43 alumnos de Magisterio desaparecieron en Iguala Guerrero el 26 de septiembre de 2014, cuando fueron secuestrados por policías municipales que los entregaron a un grupo del crimen organizado. Sí, muchas evidencias de que autoridades de todos los niveles del gobierno obstruyeron la justicia. We collected enormous amount of information about that act of disappearance. Videos, photographs, phone calls, CCTV camera footage. There's evidence, according to our investigation, that there was state collusion and state involvement in that disappearance. That was an extremely controversial case in Mexico, exposing huge level of state complicity. When reporters like Carmen Aristegui begins to report on it, or lawyers like Centro Pro try to hold the state accountable and petition, they become targets of the state. And it's exactly these people who were targeted by Pegasus. We understood that the state is very interested in our investigation, that it felt threatened by what we were discovering. 
We knew personally many of the people that were on that list. And we understood that we needed to act. Our friends and our collaborators were targeted by Pegasus. So naturally, we started to use our own skill sets. And what we could do was actually use the sort of open source ethos of forensic architecture. So open source investigation is looking at everything that's in the public domain, everything that is posted, everything that is mentioned, that is accessible to us publicly. Each story and each target of NSO was reported on in isolation. We started to look at every report and article account of hacking that we could find. So by collecting information from India and Rwanda, from Palestine and from Mexico, putting them together. In a platform, a 3D interactive space that allows you to see physical violence, digital violence, corporate transactions, exposures of hacks, and contextual events. Our ethos of open source investigation allows us to gain another insight. NSO has gone on a PR campaign to talk about why Pegasus is significant, why it's important for governments to have access to Pegasus. And a large part of the discussion is anti-terror. Now what we've found in this, in this process that the people that were most interesting for those repressive regimes were actually investigators. These are journalists, activists, opposition figures, religious figures, dissenters, people living in exile, community organizers, far from what anyone would imagine um, a so-called terrorist to be. Knowing that you are targeted extract a huge psychological toll on you. Perhaps do not want to speak to people because you don't want to compromise them. So you stop communicating. Pegasus cuts the network of practice that confronts state crimes. I've spent the past year and a half talking to over a dozen targets of Pegasus. So these are people who had experiences with arrests and imprisonment. And yet, when they were describing their experience of hacking, some were close to tears. They were talking about nightmares, psychological distress, emotional distress. Our project is really a way to push back at this, this attempt by states to cut those networks. I think people connect to this story intuitively because everyone now has a smartphone. And when your smartphone becomes a surveillance device, people are terrified and they're justifiably terrified. It's terrifying some of the strongest people in the world. Pegasus is so advanced that it's very difficult to capture all of the instances of hacking. Now, we collected this information knowing that it's only a fraction of what the actual hacks are. With this limited data set, we're still able to determine patterns and relations of how digital violence works. And in determining patterns and relations, you're also able to tell a story that, of course, the terrain of warfare in Mexico is very different than the terrain of warfare in Saudi Arabia. But when you place them alongside each other, you realize that physical and digital operate in very similar ways in both of these spaces. When we launched that project, we had people from all over the world speak about their experience. Mexicans with Rwandans, Palestinians with Emiratis, People from all over the world actually joined by being targeted by this malware. And happily, I mean, if there's one thing that I'm walking away from with this project is that it is a failed project on behalf of the state. People are not silencing. If anything, they are becoming more empowered, more organized, angrier. Standing up and saying, we continue our work. We continue resisting. We will call our states to account. And we are not afraid. We are creating networks to push back against all of that silencing and cutting that software like Pegasus does.